Hello and welcome to another lesson on acoustics. Today we're going to be talking about something really, really important in your understanding of how to acoustically treat your home recording studio. And that is the difference between velocity based acoustic panels or traps and pressure based traps. In this video, I'm going to tell you about them. I'm going to teach you how to acoustically treat low frequencies in your studio versus the higher frequencies and sort out all this craziness that is probably confusing you if you've been going down this path for a while. Now, if you're on the journey of building your home studio and you want to learn more about acoustics, I do have my free acoustic treatment guide. You can download that right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. All right, let's dive into this lesson on pressure traps versus velocity-based traps. So first thing we're gonna talk about is what are velocity absorbers? A velocity-based trap is probably what you have seen in most home DIY recording studios, and professional studios for that matter. It simply means that you're using an absorbent material with airspace in between it, small fine airspaces. Usually this is insulation, it could be cotton, it could be foam, any of these uh, types of material can be used to absorb sound waves and convert the sound wave into heat through the friction of the sound wave passing through the panel. All right, so that is a little bit of science for you there, but it's a very basic idea. And anytime you build a DIY panel on the internet, you are building a velocity-based panel. So velocity-based traps are great, and I highly recommend them, but they do have limitations. So a velocity-based trap can efficiently absorb frequencies from 125 hertz and up. As soon as you go below 125 hertz, it starts losing a lot of its efficiency at absorbing. It still can absorb frequencies lower than 125 hertz, but it doesn't do as good of a job. Now let's talk about the differing effectiveness of changing the thickness of your insulation that you're using in your velocity-based panel or the thickness of the foam you're using. So above 500 hertz, there is no big difference between using a one inch piece of thickness of some sort of absorption material versus a four inch thick piece. However, as soon as you drop below 500 hertz, there is a big difference between the thickness of panel that you are using. A four inch thick panel of insulation with a density of three pounds per cubic foot has a nearly perfect absorption rate from 125 hertz all the way up to 4,000 hertz. This is a great system to use in your home studio, especially in smaller rooms, because it will help you target down to those lower frequencies. So those one inch panels that you might find are gonna be a little bit less effective at attenuating, absorbing the lower frequencies. Now let's talk about the effect of airspace behind your panels on absorption and the efficiency of absorbing frequencies. So adding a three inch air gap or more, but at least a three inch air gap has been proven scientifically through testing in a lab that it will increase the absorption efficiency of your panel. If you place your panel with just some fiberglass wrapped in fabric right up against your wall or your ceiling, it will not be as effective as if you had put a three inch air gap behind that panel. Now we can increase the air gap behind the panel and get greater attenuation and absorption at lower frequencies. This is due to the quarter wavelength rule. So the quarter wavelength rule states that if you want to target a lower frequency below 125 hertz, you can move the velocity-based panel away from your hard surface. And if you want to try to focus on a specific frequency, we can use a distance of a quarter of the wavelength of that frequency and place the panel away from the wall. And this will have maximum absorption at that frequency. Now this is not perfect. It's still gonna have some wiggle room where it might not be absolutely perfect with velocity absorbers, but you'll be able to absorb lower than that 125 Hertz range. Now let's look at an example of how this works. So if we have a speed of sound based on the temperature and humidity in your room, let's just say it's 1,125 feet per second, which is just an average speed of sound. It changes based on temperature and pressure and things like that. So now we know that 100 hertz is gonna have a wavelength of 
11.25 feet at a speed of sound of 1,125 feet per second. Now, if we divide that wavelength by four and get a quarter of that wavelength, it will equal 2.81 feet. So as you can see, in order to reach absorption rates down to 100 hertz, you would have to move all of your panels off the wall by 2.8 feet or roughly three feet. And that's only 100 hertz. If you wanna go down to 40 hertz, you would have to practically have your panels in the middle of the room to attenuate those lower frequencies. So velocity-based traps are not great below that 125 hertz range. And in order to reach those lower, lower frequencies and get some more absorption down there, we need to use pressure-based traps. So what are pressure-based absorbers? Essentially, there are two types of overarching names for pressure-based absorbers, and you may have heard of them. One is the diaphragmatic absorbers, or panel absorbers is another name you might hear, and Helmholtz absorbers, which are tube-like structures, and they work more like blowing across the top of a bottle. Each of these types of absorbers can be tuned to a specific problem frequency in your room. What this means is that when you're sitting at your listening position, your mixing position or your mastering position, you might have a low bass frequency that is way too loud or completely gone because of standing waves in your room, meaning the low bass frequency is hitting the back wall or hitting the side walls, bouncing back and canceling out or being boosted by the incoming bass wave coming from the speakers. So this said, this is a problem for us when we're mixing or mastering. So in order to absorb that wave so it doesn't keep bouncing around in the room, we can place these pressure traps in specific locations around our room to absorb the low uh, frequency pressure. Now let's talk about diaphragmatic traps first, or absorbers. A diaphragmatic uh, absorber is actually a very simple design. It essentially consists of a sealed box that is designed based on the depth of the box to pinpoint or target certain frequencies. So we can vary the depth of this sealed box and we can make it big enough so that it actually has enough space to absorb these low frequencies. And depending on the depth of the box we build, it will absorb different frequencies in our room. So say you have a 50 hertz frequency that you want to attenuate, you would build it at the depth required based on a mathematical equation, and that would then absorb 50 hertz ideally if you built it perfectly correctly now the hemholtz resonators are the next thing i want to talk about and they work uh, in a similar fashion using a spring system with pressure however they're a little bit different in the sense that they work like when you blow across a bottle in the sense that we can build this tubular trap with an opening at the top and the sound waves will go across it and depending on the depth of the tubular trap we can pinpoint the resonant frequency of that tube and that frequency when it enters into the Hemholtz resonator will be absorbed by the resonator through the vibration spring in the air system inside the resonator, which is all very complicated, but all these things can be built by doing some research online. Uh, there are plenty of videos out there with how to build panel diaphragmatic absorbers and Helmholtz resonators. So if you want to go down this route, you can definitely do that now that you know what they are. Now, I will say before I conclude this video that using these pressure-based traps is sort of a last resort in your home studio because they are very targeted. They're almost like a, a sniper for those low frequencies. They're not very good at broadband absorption like our velocity-based traps are. So this said, I highly recommend that you completely treat your room with velocity-based traps by placing them in specific areas, which you can learn again in my free uh, resource at the end of this video at soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That will tell you exactly where to place your velocity-based traps so that you'll get maximum absorption and a great listening environment in your home studio. Once you do that, you can then test your room using a software and a measurement mic like Room EQ Wizard, and you can figure out what are the problem modes, the room modes in your room that are causing odd imbalances in the low end at your listening position. A lot of times this will end up being like a low resonant frequency that makes the low bass notes that say in my room it's 50 hertz ring out longer than other frequencies, which will make the bass sound muddy when I'm trying to mix it. So I can build a diaphragmatic absorber and put it on my back wall, for example, 
and I could build it so that it tries to attenuate 50 hertz, and that will help press down the uh, ring out time of that 50 hertz room mode so that the bass will sound a little tighter in my room. Now this is something that does take some time. So I look at acoustic treatment as something that, unless you have a huge budget and a ton of time, you might want to pace yourself, you know, work on some of the problem frequencies, some of the reflections first, and then finally we get down to the pressure based traps at the end and fine tune the room. All right, I hope this video has been extremely helpful with just some more knowledge, understanding how acoustics work in our room and having an approach, uh, generally speaking, to get to a more fine-tuned room. If you are on this journey, definitely check out that free resource. It's at soundproofyourstudio.com acoustic and is my free acoustic treatment guide. All right, I will see you all next week with more advice on soundproofing and acoustics, and I look forward to talking to you soon.